The documentary is called The White Widow Searching for Samantha. NCA got a pre-screening of it and spoke to the investigative journalist Adam Wishart, who spent the past year tracking Luthwaite's movements from her home in the UK to Brixton, Johannesburg, and finally Mombasa, Kenya. In London in 2005, uh, it appears as if Samantha Luthwaite in search of a, uh, what somebody called a jihadi rock star husband. Uh, and uh, the person who connected her to this person was a man called Sheikh Abdullah Al Faisal. He'd actually been impri imprisoned by the British state for four years between 2003 and 2007 for inciting murder, for saying things like, if you see a Hindu on the street, you should kill him. So what happened? Wishart spoke to Sheikh Al Faisal. He confirmed that Luthwaite was searching for a second husband after hers died in London's 7 7 attacks. I had a meeting with some South Africans. It was about 20 people in the room. And one of the, the men expressed a desire to marry a British girl. And he expressed his preference for a white sister. So somebody said, you need to speak to Sheikh Faisal if you want to marry a white sister from the UK. So I immediately thought of Samantha. So I picked up my mobile and I rang her and said, I found you a potential husband. I know her taste. What's her taste? Her taste is that she would like to marry a young man who's of a different race, preferably a black, from the black race, who is a very handsome and very strong in the Muslim faith. In July 2008, Luthwaite moved to Johannesburg with her children. When she came to Johannesburg, the Muslim community, they received her with open arms and she was given a red carpet treatment. So she arrived one day and got married the following day. So who was this new husband? He's called Fami Salim. I can reveal that he was born in Mombasa, Kenya in 1985. Sheikh El Faisal tells me that the head of the family that looked after Fami Salim was a man called Junaid Dokrat. Maybe he'll be able to tell me more about him and his romance with Samantha. Wishart tried to speak to Dokrat. He was unsuccessful. Dokrat was accused by the US government in 2007 of being an Al-Qaeda financier, recruiter and facilitator. He strongly rejected these claims. Wishart also revealed that Luthwaite purchased a South African ID document from a corrupt official. She used it to get credit cards and opened up a retail clothing account. The couple ran a business shipping medical supplies. So this guy, do you recognize him? Yes. You're absolutely certain it was him? Yes, I'm sure it's him. And is this what his wife looked like? Yeah, it's this one. She was always like that. Yeah, the business, what, what, what did they do here? Yeah, like uh, the injections. Needles. Needles, yeah. The trap things also Bandages, there. Things. Everything, yeah. Then a lot of Benish. In 2011, Luthwaite procured a South African passport and later that year left for Kenya. She lived in Mombasa until the house she was staying in was raided. Kenyan police say bomb-making materials were found there. The last time Luthwaite was seen was with her sister-in-law. She was the wife of Musa Hussein, who was killed in a shootout in Somalia in June 2011. What's significant about that is that it connects Samantha to the very heart of the aristocracy of Al-Qaeda. Musa Hussein was the lieutenant to and died with Harun Fazul. And he was the leader of the 1998 East African Embassy bombings, a trusted confidant of Osama bin Laden, and one of the handful of people privy to the planning of 9-11. No one knows of Luthwaite's whereabouts right now. The White Widow has gone to ground. Robin Creel, Nairobi. No more. ENCA.com.